It's the final Monday pod of the regular season, and Patrick and I are breaking down the most exciting games left, the playoff races we're the most excited for, and just what to look forward to this last week of regular season basketball. Let's get into foul trouble. Let's go. I feel like we're in playoff form already, James. I know. I've been I feel like I've been wanting the playoffs for like a month now. Hey, and I feel like they've almost started early just because of all of the teams in flux. Today we're gonna go over the just like insane scuttlebutt of chaos that's going on in the Eastern Conference. The top and bottom of the Western Conference playoff picture is absolutely insane as well. And the middle. Um, Yeah, not (laughs) to mention the middle. Um, But I think the perfect place for us to start is just, what do we know? What do we know right now, James? Well, we know the Celtics are the one seed. We know the Celtics are the one seed with a button, 62 and 16, we, absolutely dominant. We know the Bulls and Hawks are the 9 and 10. Yes, they are going to play in the 9 and 10. So that's the Eastern Conference. That's all we know. That's all we know. And then the Western Conference, I would say like... We, I would say we know the Warriors are going to end up in the 9-10. Most likely. I would say we, I'm going to, you know what? I guarantee it. <laughs> Nine or 10. Guarantee. Okay. Like it. I, I, I like it. You And we're probably right on that. There is a big Lakers Warriors game on Tuesday, the night or tomorrow, I guess that if the Warriors win and the, the Lakers only have three more games. So there's kind if of the Lakers lose. I guarantee they'll be in the nine, 10. <laughs> yeah, um, but the 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 Warriors could jump up into the nine. It, it would be weird. It's probably not going to happen, but um, it's possible. And then the other thing is, I think we are pretty sure that the four five is going to be the Clippers and the Mavericks in some order. In some order, unless the Mavericks were to really fall off, but they have a pretty easy schedule, and they've been playing going super forward, well. and they've been playing so well. So I think that's pretty much set in stone but then everything else is races yeah um where which race do you want to start with first so let's start with the top of the west where there is a two-way tie at the moment for the one seed but the thunder are one game back so the timberwolves and nuggets are 54 and 24 the thunder are 53 and 25 thunder are on a little skid where uh shay and j-dub haven't been playing Mm mm-hmm um, yeah, which has been really tough for them recently. So they have they've been seven or no, they've been five and five in their last ten. Yeah, obviously with the injuries. So the Thunder's last four. Let's start the Thunder. They've got Sacramento, San Antonio, Milwaukee, and Dallas. Weird set of games because Milwaukee has this like Knicks been an up. absolute free, free fall, fall mode. Um, so that's probably gonna be a big game for both teams fighting tooth and nail. To, uh, you know, get the win there because Milwaukee, we're going to touch on them later, is holding on by a thread to get their two seed in the East. Dallas, I mean, at that point, Dallas might be locked into the four or the five, probably more likely locked into the five, maybe fighting for the four on that final game. So we'll see if that game matters to Dallas. I know Luka was kind of hobbling and bleeding out of his knee yesterday. So we'll see if maybe they'll go rest over seeding. Um yeah, the Thunder. I mean, I guess it really just depends what's going on with Shea and J-Dub. I haven't really been able to find anything on their injury status. Yeah, the, Shea's dealing with this, like, contusion, I think, on his thigh. That That's kind of like a really touch-and-go injury that he, I, I'm sure if it was the playoffs right now, he would be playing. But um, they are kind of locked into the top three. So I, I kind of understand why they haven't had their foot on the gas they own the tiebreaker against the Nuggets, so um, but they do not own the tiebreaker, uh, or so it goes down to division record against the um, against the Timberwolves. Right now, the Timberwolves are leading in the division. They're twelve and three in the division. Oklahoma City is twelve and four. So that kind of goes down to the biggest game really of this race which is Timberwolves Nuggets on Wednesday. If the Timberwolves are able to win, they will secure the best divisional record, and then they'll keep that tiebreaker over the Thunder. So I think it's pretty trending towards Oklahoma City having that three seed. Three seed, seed. yeah. So what Patrick alluded to this Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Game, the, the Nuggets and the Timberwolves. So 
Going into that, the Timberwolves have the Wizards and the Nuggets have the Jazz. So it's safe to assume both teams are probably going to be 55 and 24 going into that game. The winner of that game will have the one game edge. Um, and then the Nuggets finish with the Spurs and the Grizzlies. So I think that's the only losable game the Nuggets really have left if they're going to be fighting for the seeding, especially now that Jamal Murray's back. Him being out was a big part of the Nuggets kind of recent slide. Um, Timberwolves might be getting cat back soon, but either way, they have it a little bit tougher because they, after the Denver game, have Atlanta and then Phoenix. And Phoenix has been kind of winnable and losable in any any single game, it feels like. Yeah, the Suns just uh, took out the Timberwolves last Friday in... Really, the Suns were in control the whole game. It ended up being a 10-point game by the end of the game, but it was around 20 for most of, of the game. And then the Suns took out their starters, and things got a little bit more even after that. But yeah, I mean, I you can't like stress how important this last game against the Nuggets is for the Timberwolves. It, it pretty much comes down to if they're able to win, they will secure that number one seed. Whether they really want that number one seed or not, I, it's kind of up for discussion. And I guess there's no reason to tank right now. We're going to get into the West play-in race right now. But it's a little scary looking down at that 9-10 matchup just as it currently stands. Yeah. I'm, so I think we're both – if we're doing predictions, what is your prediction? It, for this – race this, this race for the top three my prediction is i'm gonna guess that it's going to ooh, what's the nuggets i'm gonna go nuggets one timberwolves two thunder three that's my final prediction i think the nuggets they did lose the timberwolves last week but they didn't have jamal murray the nuggets when they're fully healthy in my opinion are still the best team in the entire league i like them in a matchup like that give me the nuggets yeah, I will go Nuggets 1, Timberwolves 2, OKC 3 as well. Uh, the Timberwolves just have a harder schedule in these last four games. Yeah. It is important to note, though, that if the Timberwolves win the Denver game, they can lose one of the Atlanta or Phoenix games and still get the one seed. Yeah. Yeah. So they and, do have that edge over Denver. And Shams just came out today and said that Cat will play before the end of the season. Mm. So whether and I mean, the season is just this week. So whether that is, I mean, you got to think Wednesday against the Nuggets is really soon, but they could maybe at least have him back for the Suns game. I So if Cat's available for that Suns game, but... All the seeds are kind of locked up. Do you play him just yeah. to get him back yeah, in the... I would. Yeah, I think... I that... think it's good to get the chemistry back, especially for a team that's a little so-so on offense. Yeah, just and their offense has been struggling recently. Their defense is just so, so elite. Good. It keeps them in every game. But their offense has really been on life support without Cat. Okay, so yeah, I think we're in agreement there. It's seeming more likely than not it's going to be Nuggets, Timberwolves, Thunder, but that could all change with that uh, Nuggets, Timberwolves game. That's going to be huge. I think the most Timberwolves timeline is winning the Denver game and then losing the Atlanta and Phoenix games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that could, that could, yeah, you get a cat back for that Atlanta game. Oh, no. All right, let's. <laughs> Let's move on to the next race that I think is the most exciting, which is the Eastern race for the two seed. This is just such a shit show. Like, I, it's hard to even look at it. So I think this conversation starts with the Bucks. Yeah, so the Bucks are 47 and 31. They've lost four straight games to four bad teams. Uh, uh, well, they've lost in the Knicks. Three bad teams in the, the Knicks. In the Knicks, yeah. But they lost to the Wizards, the Grizzlies, and the Raptors. The Raptors were on a 14-game losing streak before they beat the Bucs. Um, so the reason why this is interesting is because the Bucs are 47-31. and 31, The Magic are 46-32. and 32, The Knicks are 46-32. and 32. So all of these teams are like basically within a game of each other. Here's where it gets really interesting for Milwaukee more than the other teams. Their last four games are Boston, Orlando, OKC, Orlando. Or the Magic, obviously, are one game back, and they have these two games against the Bucks. So the Bucks don't have an easy game, especially if OKC. Maybe, actually, maybe that OKC game is a rest of the starters game if it looks like, you know, the Timberwolves are running away with it and they don't have a chance at overtaking the two from Denver. Because mm -hmm. that's a possibility. That it, it, are they going to fight for that two seed against the Nuggets? Are they going to, you know what I mean? Like, OKC... 
I would assume is going to have a lot of to play for that game, but we just don't know. Boston is the weird team because they're still winning, but they don't really have a lot to play for. They've had the one seed clocked up forever. Missoula seems like the coach who's like, you're going to just stay in game shape the whole time, so we're going to make you play, especially against a marquee team like Milwaukee. So, yeah, that's really... Boston is 15 games ahead of the Bucks right now. Minnesota, who is technically number one right now, is 16 games ahead of the Rockets, who are the number 11 t- team. That's mm-hmm. just like how far the Celtics are ahead. But yeah, I mean, like you can't feel good. Apparently, the Bucks had this like core players and Doc Rivers meeting yesterday before their game against the Knicks, where all of the players had their chance to like say their piece about what's going on in Milwaukee and why they're not like playing up to expectations. Giannis had these really weird quotes um, in that story that The Athletic dropped where he's like, he's talking about like, there's just not playing with any love right now. And he like went down the line of saying like, when was the last time Malik Beasley did his trademark three point celebration? When was the last time Pat Connaughton did his? When was the last time Jay Crowder backpedaled after hitting a three? Like, Really weird, bad Doc Rivers energy is coming at me from the Bucks right now. So this is why I think this race is really fascinating. Is because the Magic and the Bucks obviously play each other twice. The Magic, they have Houston, probably a win. Houston doesn't have a lot to play for. They've got the two Bucks teams, but then they've got Philly. So we're going to touch on Philly later. But that's a team, if I'm in the East, I don't want to play right now. Yeah. Um, but this is where it gets interesting because while those two get to control their destiny by playing against each other... The Knicks have Chicago, Boston, Brooklyn, and Chicago. I think it's very likely the Knicks go 3-1 and or 4 now. Because Boston might not have a lot to play for, and the Knicks are hungry. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sitting right there for the Knicks to to get up to the two seed. The tough thing is they do not own their tiebreaker against Orlando. So it really is like Orlando has their fate in their own hands to get up to that two seed if they're able to win really one or two games against the Bucks. Yeah, I guess the pathway for the Knicks is the Bucks go like one and three and finish at 48 wins. But one of those wins is against the or Magic. Like, yeah, the Magic go two and two and finish at 48. And then the Knicks go three and one and finish at 49. That's the Knicks pathway to getting the two seed. And it's crazy that we're talking about these teams contending for the two seed, but like the Bucks and the Magic have a hard schedule versus they're playing each other. Let's just assume they split. I feel like it's a fair, somewhat yeah, fair yeah. assumption. Like, I don't know if the Magic are going to win that Philly game. Like, I don't know. I think the Knicks, weirdly, not having the tiebreakers versus either, just because they have such an easy schedule and they get to avoid those teams, are like, all right, we'll let you guys kind of beat up on each other and maybe we get the two seed, but. It's 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 like or Bucks just win both Orlando games or the Magic just win both Milwaukee games and I mean it's you, you want to talk about some chicanery that could go on if you're the Sixers and it's looking like you're locked into the seven seed and the Magic have just won their first game against the Bucks do you maybe rest and be that game so you can maybe draw the Magic. <laughs> In the first round, instead of playing against the Bucks or the Knicks, I think probably th- not. It's super <sighs> risky, but I, something you could do if you like your. If I'm the Sixers, I feel good against any of these three teams. But what I don't like about all three of these teams is that they're all physical bruising teams. Because mm-hmm. I think the Sixers are like, can we just get him beat a series where he's not going to get elbowed in the face? Or like, <laughs> No, he's going to get beat <laughs> the fuck up. up against any one of these three teams. So I think Philly's kind of like, damned if you do, damned if you don't, versus any of these three teams. I think they're way more interested in trying to get out of the plan. Yeah, yeah. And which is completely possible as we continue to go down on, on this. Well, let's do predictions for this uh, two seed. Okay, for the two seed? Okay, so I this is weird. Like Bucks, they're they're just falling apart. They've got this Boston game. Like, is this gonna be one of those like what a win for the Bucks? But it's like, ah, oh, the Celtics <laughs> kind of didn't it. really have their foot on the gas. They don't really want to show anything for the playoffs. Or is this like the Celtics are like, you know what, why don't we just stomp on these guys one more time? I because feel- I feel like the Celtics game is like is massive. 
Yeah, it's so big. And if you're the Celtics, who would you rather have in the two seed? Would you rather have the Bucks to play against most likely one of the Sixers or the Heat? Or would you rather have the Magic to play one of the Sixers or the Heat? Okay, if I'm the Celtics, you're in a weird spot. Because there's only one team that before before Embiid got hurt, the Sixers were the only team that looked like they could even trail. Like, healthy Embiid, the Sixers are probably not 16 games back. They're probably like five or six games back from the one seed. So I feel like if you're the Celtics on one hand... You know who the other best team is when they're healthy. It's Philly. But on the other hand, you own Philly. That's true. So if you're Boston, I feel like you're just like, you know what? I don't don't really care. For me, I'm like, if I'm the Celtics, I would rather have the playoff pedigree team in the Bucks play against the Sixers or the Heat, two also like great playoff pedigree teams. Because I'm a little like I am pretty high on the magic. I like their chances against the Sixers of the heat. I'm not really sure who I would pick in a, in a series like that, but I would probably feel better about picking the bucks to win a series against the Sixers of the heat than the magic to play against the Sixers of the heat. So maybe, maybe I take my foot off the gas in that, uh, Celtics bucks game. But, um, also, with how the Bucks have played recently, the Bucks might just fuck around and lose against, you know, the Peyton Pritchard led Boston Celtics. Yeah, the, the Celtics can win games they're not trying to win. They're, they're, they're so they're, deep. They're way deeper than all these teams. I mean, I guess my final prediction, it's so tough because Magic, all right, I'm going to go through each team. Bucks, loss, win, win, loss. I think the Bucks are going to go two and two. I think the Magic are going to go two and two. I think the Knicks are going to go three and one. Which would mean the Bucks and Knicks both have 49 wins. So I'm gonna go Bucks one seed, Knicks two seed, Magic three seed. That's my prediction, but who knows? Yeah, I mean that makes sense to me. Um, or Bucks two seed, Magic three seed. Or Bucks, sorry, just shift it down one. Bucks Knicks Magic. I didn't even write the Celtics on my thing because <laughs> yeah, no, it <laughs> yeah. literally doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm there, but it's so close. It's just stupid. But your prediction out. Um, who's getting the two? I'm going to go with the Bucks. There's no way they're going to lose two games against the Magic in a row. I think um, I, I have them splitting the Magic games and winning the OKC game. That's my prediction. Yeah, geez. That is a tough schedule. <laughs> Such a tough schedule. So, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to go. I think... Who are the Magic playing? Magic, Magic playing of Houston, Rockets. Milwaukee, Philly, Milwaukee. Knicks are going to get this two seed. <laughs> Knicks are going to get the two seed. Oh, I love that. Knicks are going to get the two seed. And then... At what? 50 and 32 or 49 and 32? Or 49 and 31? They are going to win out. I kind of think they're going to win out, too. They are going to win out. I just feel like... I know... It, all right. I, don't, I think we're a little biased because you and I have been very pro-Knicks the whole year. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to check our bias because we're talking about this Boston game for Milwaukee as like... The daunting Celtics. But then for the Knicks, we're like, oh, they'll beat the Celtics. But there's war. Talking about one team who has completely <laughs> let go of the rope in the last <laughs> week. Like, there's athletic articles being released about how their team is in complete shambles. Giannis is, like, doing his teammates three-point celebrations in post-game after a loss. And then in comparison to the Knicks, where Jalen Brunson just had, like, 40 points last night. I know they're not super help, healthy, but it seems like they're going to get OG back soon. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. not, but they're a lot deeper as so, well. So, Patrick, let me throw another monkey. I, I'm kind of with you. I'm, I am I feel like Knicks go 3-1. and one. Maybe they beat Boston. Maybe they drop one of the easy ones. I just feel like the Knicks are going to end up at 49 wins. Here's the monkey wrench for this whole equation, though. The Cavs, who are currently the five seed, are 46 and 33. They've looked like an absolute train wreck, but they have played like the Lakers are playing really well. Yeah. The Clippers, when they're playing well, are playing well. The Cavs have Memphis, Pacers, and Charlotte. If they can win that Pacers game, they're probably going to get to 49 wins. And then all of a sudden, they could be the two seed or the three seed. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, they are right there. And, and it's they have a homestand of Grizzlies, Pacers, and Hornets. The Pacers have been playing pretty well recently. 
Um, and they're right it nestled in this group as well. They're only two and a half games back, which is probably too far back to get yeah. up to the two seed. But I mean, you can rise to the four seed depending on yeah, if Milwaukee how people fours it um, play. So I mean, yeah, that's that's totally in play. It is nice for the Cavs that they have a they end the season on a three game homestand um, with all winnable Man, games. Now that I'm, I think the Cavs might go forty nine and thirty three. <laughs> they might tie the Knicks. Yeah, jeez. But they but then again, they've been playing awful lately. They of have. course, I feel like they've been playing good teams though. That's the thing. they've that's been the playing good teams. Thing. They went on a huge West Coast road trip, which is never easy. And then yeah. you end it with the. Clippers 12 o'clock on a, you know, Saturday game, which is always going to be the weirdest game you play in a season. Um, yeah, I, the East, the top of the East is is wild. I mean, we're going to touch on it on Thursday and see how all these games unfold. But should we pivot to the bottom of the East? Yeah, look at that for do it. a second. Um, so right now it's weird because the Pacers are con- are both in the race. For the teams we just talked about, and they're in this race for the 7-8. <laughs> yeah, so so right now we've got, at the 5, we've got the Cavs, who we just kind of talked about. They're 16 games back. We've got the Pacers, who are 17 and a half games back. We've got the Sixers, who are 18 and a half games back. And then we've got the Heat, who are 19 games back. I feel pretty confident Here, right I'm now. A, let, me, let me rephrase it real quick. Cavs 46, Pacers 45, Sixers 44, yeah. Heat 43. That's their win totals. They're all just one game ahead of each other. Um, uh, the only team of these three teams that has... L- the Cavs have three games left. All the other teams have four games left. So that should be noted. And the Sixers have three, I believe. The Sixers also have three? Okay. Yeah. So Pacers only have three, too. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah, Pacers only have three well. So it's just the Heat with four games. So the Heat have four games left. The Heat have a really easy four game schedule. So this is the Cavs and Pacers have each other, but other than that, super easy schedule. Cavs, as I mentioned, Grizzlies and Hornets, Pacers, Raptors, and Hawks. The Sixers have the Pistons, the Magic, and the Nets. I know the Magic are a good team, but I kind of like the Sixers to run the table. The Heat have a really easy schedule. They've got Atlanta. No, 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 they don't because they've got Dallas. But then they they've have two got, Toronto games. Yeah, back to back Toronto games. It kind of at feel, home against. Toronto. I feel like the Heat are going to go three and one. I feel like the Sixers are going to go three and zero. Oh, and I feel like the Cavs and Pacers one will go three and zero. Oh, one will go two and one. Yeah, that's and my I, guess. I think the Heat have an upside to go four and zero. Oh. I mean, Matt Mavericks yeah. game is at home, so um, and that that's always weird. But um, I mean, this it's like. <laughs> It, this is a weird race because they're already all separated, but they all have such easy schedules. They yeah. all kind of just have one tough game, and then everyone else is easy. It would be hard for me to imagine the Heat rising out of the play-in. I don't think the Heat will because they are the two games back of the six seed. But, I mean, if the Sixers get to 47, maybe? It's just tough because the Cavs and Pacers, one is probably going to go 3-0, and one's probably going to go 2-1. So let's say the Cavs go... 3-0, they'll be at 49. The Pacers, if they went 2-1, they'd be at 47. So that just depends on who owns the tiebreaker. I mean, with Cleveland, and you know, if Cleveland goes 2-1, they're end at 48. They'll still beat the Sixers. So I, the Sixers are kind of in a tough spot unless they have that tiebreaker over the Pacers. Um, Yeah, the Pacers. <laughs> There's so much that goes into tiebreakers as well if you've never, like, Mm-hmm. Dove in. So the Pacers to what that are is. the Pacers are two and one versus Sixers this year. Okay, and do they play again? They don't. So I think so. This, they have we the can probably breaker. say the Sixers are pretty much locked in to the seven, unless the Pacers and Cavs completely fall apart. Yeah, yeah. They it, so the Pacers wouldn't have to just even up with the Sixers. They would have to completely fall below which would be really difficult considering the rest of their schedule and that they've kind of hit a groove But if you're recently. the Sixers, I mean, I think you there's two things you are a little worried about. Getting home court over Miami for that 7-8 play-in is going to be nice. Mm-hmm. I think what you're worried about if you're the Sixers is they just beat the Heat, but they beat the Heat in a game where Embiid was negative 19 plus minus. Um, I don't know. There's something about that Heat-Sixers matchup that seems... To trouble the Sixers a lot. 
Yeah, I mean, and then there's also always the uh, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler um, playoff like game. Hulk out <laughs> factor where Jimmy Butler could just completely Hulk out yeah. and take you out of the end your season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we kind of fleshed it out there. It's it's probably going to be Sixers Heat in the 7-8 uh, plane. It'd be crazy if it wasn't Sixers Heat, given that the Pacers own the tiebreaker. All these teams have easy schedules. They're probably all going to have same records going forward. Man, the East is wild, man. Like it's the Cavs, crazy. the Cavs. Like if this slide continues, I really don't think it will. I really don't think it will. But if it were to, like they could drop, but they could also get the two seed. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I mean that would be such a coup for Cleveland fans to to get the two seed after. Like I feel like generally national media in the past week has really sunk their teeth into. Donovan say goodbye to Donovan Mitchell Cavs fans um which I mean you probably should say goodbye to Donovan Mitchell but maybe you might have a nice little playoff run I mean if you can draw the Knicks in the first round which like not an easy series but a winnable series for the Cavs especially if you can get home court and then you just roll your uh, I'd pick the Knicks I'd pick the Knicks too but after last year I've just would you be gobsmacked if I told you the Cavs won in seven games against this Knicks team? I think I would. Really? You'd be after, gobsmacked? The Cavs have made no real changes to their team after they did get gobsmacked by the Knicks last year. They did. They did, but the I Knicks mean, are it's better another now, year. even without Randall, in my opinion, than last year's Knicks. And the Cavs are the same team. I don't know. I would be kind of shocked if the Knicks blew that series. I, I wouldn't be too surprised but i wouldn't pick the Cavs. um but it, it, that to me that's not like telling me like oh yeah boston lost in round one that would fucking floor me um but um i don't know it's there it's there for the Cavs if, if you want it if you play like the team that supposedly has four all-stars that you're trying to sell us it's there for the taking okay last last race the most high profile race of them all the um race for the six seed in the west okay so the race for the six seed here are our contenders the suns 46 and 32 the pelicans 46 and 32 the kings 45 and 33 and the lakers 45 and 34 yeah so i mean this is just so close you just look at the loss column of all these teams Right now, the Suns are sitting in the sixth seed. ESPN's giving them a 21 or a 79% chance to dodge the play-in and get that sixth seed. But it is not going to be an easy Yeah, like, so the lane. Suns have Clippers, Clippers, Sacramento, Minnesota, all teams that are going to be playing for something, um, you know, here. It, I mean, the Clippers, they're going to have to play because if they drop these two Phoenix games, all of a sudden they could lose home court to the Mavericks. Um, I'm so, not sure who has the tiebreaker there. but um, So, I mean, and then the, Sun, the Suns have four tough games. That's the, that's the, that's the rub for the Suns. The, the good thing for the Suns is they kind of shown they're the type of team that could beat anybody but also lose to anybody. Mm-hmm. And so they're the type of team that could rattle off four straight against, especially if the Clippers kind of keep slumping. The helpful thing for the Suns is they have the tiebreaker against the Pelicans. That's huge. Right now, they have the same record, and that's why the Suns are sitting above. Um, It probably won't come into play, but they have the tiebreaker against Golden State. And then this game is like it should be circled on everyone's um, calendar. This Friday, the Suns play the Kings. The winner of that gets the tiebreaker between the Suns and the Kings, and that is like just could not be a bigger game uh, for this race. Yeah, so we'll drop down to the Kings and then get back to the Pelicans. The Kings have OKC. Again, not really sure what's going on with Shea and J-Dub. Even without Shea and J-Dub, though, I know they've like they've kind of been playing 500. It's not like they're playing like lose, 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 lose basketball. They're playing like decent basketball even without their top guys. So I don't even know if that's an easy game even without those two guys. No. Especially the Kings not. are slumping. The Kings are slumping and we haven't talked about it on this podcast, but they are going to be without Kevin Herter and, and Malik, Malik Monk. Monk for this whole end of season mm-hmm. run. So. Yeah. Oh, then they've got the Pelicans who obviously are in direct competition with them, so that's a tough game. The Pelicans have given the Kings a lot of problems mm-hmm. uh, with their size. Then they've got that Phoenix matchup which you just talked about, and then they finish with Portland. 
Yeah, so, I mean, that would be a huge game for the Kings. That will most likely be a huge game for the Kings, and it always gets weird when you're playing, like, a cupcake like Portland on the last game of the season. You have everything to play for. They have nothing to play for. Um, But, yeah, really, really tough road. I feel like games like that really come down to, like, was there some sort of shit talking or something that happened earlier in the year that some dude on Portland's like, I'm not going to forget that. And then when he gets his opportunity, he's like, I'm going all out. Yeah. Does, <laughs> does Scoot Henderson just have some weird vendetta versus Alex Lang or <laughs> what's going on there? Uh, okay. So the Pelicans, they've got the trailblazers, the aforementioned trailblazers. That should be a win. That should get them to 47. They've got this Kings game. They've been really good against the Kings. I think that gets the Pelicans to 48. Four and zero oh against the Kings this season. Oh, they've got the extra game because the the IST. Okay. Then the Pelicans have the Warriors. At that point, the Warriors, I don't really know what the Warriors really have to play for. So this is, so detour. We're going to detour. This is where it gets really complicated. The Lakers are playing the Warriors. And this is a big game because if the Warriors win, they have a legit shot to snag home court in the 9-10 game. If the Warriors lose, they have nothing to play for the rest of the season. Yeah. So the the Warriors are only one game behind the Lakers in the loss column. What the and the Lakers have one less game, but two more wins. But to but it really matters most. What I think the what loss, is in the yeah. loss column as far as tiebreakers, the Lakers Warriors game will decide the tiebreaker there, which is obviously huge. Um, Here's what the Lakers schedule is weird because they've got the Warriors game. But then they've got Memphis, think that's a win, and they've got New Orleans, who Lakers kind of seem to own when everything's full tilt. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes and no. That's another game that lies in, like, if the Pelicans win that game, they will most likely have the tiebreaker because of um, conference record, because they're not in the same division. Um, New Orleans, I believe, still has a better... Um, let's see conference record. The Lakers are 25 and 24 and yeah, the Pelicans are 27 and 21. So yeah, the, the Pelicans, if they're able to win that game would also win the tiebreaker against the Lakers. But if they lose the Lakers, will have. The but if they lose the head. Lakers will have the tiebreaker. Um, so yeah, I mean, just absolutely huge games. And this is after Anthony Davis got poked in the eye again yesterday against the, uh, tr- the Timberwolves, which th- that was a game that they really could have used and were in the game until uh, that happened. That happened. So I mean, it's realistic. The Warriors could, especially with how they've been playing. Warriors have been playing really, really well recently. The seven and three in their last 10, they could get up to have that home court advantage uh, in that 9 10 matchup against the Lakers, but it would take some real muscle to get there. Okay. We, I feel like we've just been jumping all over the place. So, just to refresh people, the Suns and Pelicans are currently tied at 46 and 32, but the Suns have the tiebreaker, so they're six. Pelicans and Kings are currently the seven eight. Mm-hmm. at 46 and 45 wins. The Lakers and Warriors are currently the 9-10 at 45 and 43. What is your 6 through 10 prediction? I mean, I just got to go with what I'm hoping for. I'm going to say Suns secure that 6 seed. They're able to take care of business against the Clippers. Who knows what's 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 going on there between the Clippers and the Mavericks, but that'll be the 4-5. Suns will come in at 6 then I think it's so hard to call that Lakers Warriors game. I'm gonna say because that I'm gonna it, say every s- one of those games came down to the wire this I'm, year. I'm gonna say Sun State the six. I think they go two and two to finish out the season, get to 48 wins. I think the Pelicans are also gonna go two and two and get to 48 wins as well. So they'll stay six and seven. I think the Kings are gonna go one and three to end the year. Yeah, I think the Kings are going to drop down to the nine as a 36 loss team. I think the Lakers go two and one and get to 47 wins and they'll be the eight seed. And I think the Warriors are going to go three and one. And I think they'll still be the 10 seed. Yeah, I'll I'll go with that, too. Um, 
it's so close. It's like, I, I'm not even, I, you can just talk yourself in circles and circles and circles. Like really the Warriors, the rest of their schedule isn't that bad. You know, they're playing against the Trailblazers, they're playing against the Warriors. And then it's two kind of coin flip games against the Pelicans and the Lakers who, you know, they, they've won two of the three games against the Lakers this year, but I don't know. I feel like both the Warriors and the Lakers, you kind of just got to throw out what's happened for the entire year season, yeah, because they seem like completely new teams. And no, then, this is the craziest end of the season. Like we were going through the records last year and like a couple of years, like losing the eighth seed has been having a losing record. And honestly, in both conferences, a lot of the last 10 seasons. And this is insane, man. Yeah, no. This I, like this Warriors team is probably the greatest 10 seed in NBA history. I mean, I'd have to look at it, but it because I know we've had years where the eight seeds had 50 wins, mm-hmm. right? That we like that OKC, like 50 win eight seed in like 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 10 seed? Yeah, that is. I mean, they're for, they have 43 wins. They're not going to get to 50. But that. But, but as a 10 seed, though, because remember, yeah. this is not an eight seed. This is a 10 seed. This is two whole seeds lower. If they get to 46 wins, I mean, yeah, that that's is insane. pretty impressive. Oh, man. Yeah, so what's like I know we've we've highlighted some big games. There's the Bucks, you know, Milwaukee two game series. There's, you know, the Lakers Warriors game that's going to be huge. The Suns Clippers series is going to be huge. Um, you know, we've highlighted the uh Denver Mi- Minnesota game. What's like the one single regular season game that you're like I'm watching that one? I mean, I I think the like most important game that that we got to see is the Timberwolves Nuggets game because I think if the Timberwolves can secure home court against the Nuggets that will go huge like I'm not going to pick the Timberwolves in a series against the Nuggets most likely of course injuries like play a huge factor in in what could happen here but if the Timberwolves can secure home court all the way through their Western Conference run that would be so big for them. So I think that's that's probably if I have to zero in on on one game that is going to be the the biggest game. I would say that one. But then I mean, you look at that Warriors Lakers game. There's so much history wrapped up in there. It's kind of like who is who. I mean, both of them will be in the mix still, no matter who wins it. But with the history there, like it, it's just such a juicy game. Yeah, I think the single most important game is going to be Denver, Minnesota, but I would put that Warriors Lakers game second. And I know it's weird to talk about the Lakers and the Warriors because I think a lot of people are rolling their eyes like, why are we talking about the Lakers and the Warriors? But I think the seating is like a little misleading in how we should look at these teams just because, you know, we're talking about Milwaukee is fighting for a two seed, you know, at 47 and 31. And they're battling teams like the Knicks. Like, the Lakers have the same record as those teams. (laughs) Like, they would be fighting for the two seed in the East. So that's why talking about these bottom of the West teams is a little weird. Because if you throw these teams in the East, even the Warriors, that's why I was saying they're probably the greatest 10 seed ever. If you threw this Warriors into the East and give them an East schedule, I would actually guarantee they have the two seed in the East right now. Yeah, I mean they have forty three wins right now. Bucks have forty seven. Like if the Bucks didn't win another game and the Warriors won out, they would have the same record. Yeah, which is insane. Yeah, like I don't know. That's why it's a little weird talking about these East teams. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I mean it. It's weird. I feel like in both conferences we're at this weird point again where it feels like the seven and eight are like oddly better than the five and the six. Yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> no, you don't. Think I'm, so? I'm out on that. I think Philly is head and shoulders better than Indiana, Cleveland, New York. I mean, maybe in the East, but I, I'm not saying that in the West. Really? I, the I five like, and the six? The no, Mavericks the, okay, and the, the Mavericks, Suns? The Mavericks, are. I would take over any team below them. But I don't know if I'd take the Suns over the Lakers or the Warriors right now. I mean, I would, but <laughs> that's, I, that's I, I just think, me. I just straight up don't think I would. But all right, should we get to best take, worst take? Yeah, let's get to best take, worst take. Because those teams are not playing each other ever again this season. Nope. We'll no, never know. No, they're not. No, they're not. Except for in the Western Conference Finals, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that That's going to go hard. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so best take, my best take of the week is going to Rockets head coach Ime Udoka. 
uh, who was talking about, of course, the Rockets made this huge late season push and then they kind of fell apart, and which was capitalized with a absolute drumming from the Warriors. I went to that game. Um, yes, you were you were there. You got to see it live. Um, there was a lot of um, references to 1970s action movies. It was great. And the Rockets just completely fell apart. And Ime Udoka, talking about that in his postgame press, press conference, said, it looked like the moment was too big for a lot of the players out there. Looked like deers in the headlights a bit. Either looked soft or scared, one or the other. And I think that he... Completely hit the nail on the head. And why I'm giving it my best take of the week is just like a lot of times you don't hear coaches talk with the the candidness of Ime Udoka here. So um, I just thought it was it was refreshing to hear that. And it, it's true. You know, the Rockets, they're a super young team and they're just they're not ready for that. That smoke from a, a title laden core like the Warriors. I couldn't find a best take this week. This is a bad week for takes. <laughs> or a good week for ta- takes, depending I, how I you look find, at it. I legitimately was going up and down my usual you know, sources of, of take finding, and I, I just couldn't find a good take. Hey, that's okay, because we don't award the best, best take. takes. We only the award week. the worst <laughs> takes. So every week, Patrick and I bring the worst take from the media landscape. At the end of the month, we decide who had the, be- the worst take of the entire month. And at the end of the season, Patrick and I will crown the worst take of the season. So I had two nominees because I think we both brought this one, Gilbert Arenas. Yep, that's mine. Gilbert Arenas said, Nicole Jokic is the worst MVP winner of the last 40 years. He said specifically... Nikola is probably statistically the worst MVP winner. In um, in 2021, 20, Jokic's team was fifth. What's the historic part in that? Oh, big man almost had a triple-double. Let's give it to him. That's not how it happened at, at all. all. The One. team was severely injured. And you can, like, I'm not going to say it's a great, like, argument, but you can make arguments of, Better MVPs, blah, 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 blah. Statistically, if you're bringing statistics into this conversation, if, yeah, if you're bringing there's statistics pretty much no the statistical argument <laughs> if that you're bringing Jokic statistics is great. into the argument, Jokic is the best MVP winner. Of yeah, the last literally. Year. Taking care of your health isn't easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last year, I've been drinking AG1 every single day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel strong and ready to take on my day. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. AG1 has been really helpful for me because lately I've been on a lower calorie, super high protein diet and I need to still get my vitamins and minerals and AG1 makes that really, really easy for me. I just take it every day in the morning and my whole day is just ahead of me and I feel great throughout the day. If there's one product I'd recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1 and that's why I've partnered with them for so long. So if you wanna take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash foul trouble. That's drinkag1.com slash foul trouble. Check it out. So I, I decided to bring another worst take to the table because this is the second time this guy's done this. And I just have to, man. I got Jermaine Cole, a rapper. Okay. He said, quote, resembling Cam Reddish, so full of potential but never given a real chance to develop. J. Cole, I don't know if you watch NBA basketball. The Lakers gave this man plenty of minutes early in the season. No man has had more (laughs) opportunities to stick on an NBA roster than fucking Cam Cam Reddish. Reddish. Also, this is the same guy who rapped like they fucked up Markel Fultz's shot. Like, no, Markel had nerve damage. No one fucked up Markel Fultz's shot, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, Hawks. Knicks, (laughs) Knicks, <laughs> Lakers. Lakers. Not only has he had like three major markets and gotten minutes in all of them. Like, this is such a stupid lyric. <laughs> I mean, I can't co-sign. I can't. I can't co-sign. co-sign. It's not as bad as the Gilbert. Well, it's not as bad. The Gilbert one is just. But the thing with the Gilbert one, Patrick, is you know, other than being a strong contender for worst take of the year, people will be listening to whatever song this was for generations to come. <laughs> That's this, true. This take will never go away. They'll un- <laughs> Hundreds of years from now, they'll uncover this, this J. Cole, Cole track, right? and they'll be like, oh, um, like, we well, lost did, all he, the NBA He did title it, might delete later, so maybe delete it now. 
Maybe while you will. have time before we proliferate this too much. It seems like recently J. Cole is like going back and forth on his takes. So he might he might take it back. He already apologized to Kendrick Lamar. He like, apologized? Yeah, you didn't see this. Dude, Publicly he apologized. Dude, I got flamed in a YouTube video because I said J. Cole should never touch the S tier of rappers. And I firmly stand by that. This dude is not not a part of any big three you that know, I want on my basketball team. <laughs> I don't listen to rap like that, but uh, I can tell you that one time J. Cole wore a Suns shirt. So he he really wants some brownie ports for me. But come on, man. It's got to go to Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, it's Gilbert. Gilbert it's got to go to Gilbert. Gilbert Arenas and Nicole. Yeah, Gilbert Arenas is our worst take of the week. Um, yeah, that. what is that? At, at Gilbert Arenas is a straight up xenophobic. Yeah, he is. He is. It's like kind of crazy. No one. Will. I mean, it is. It is what it is at this point. But can I give like a sub worst take of the week nominee for Shannon Sharp not pushing him on this harder? Like, come on, Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. No. Group him in there. Group him in there. Yeah. I'm giving it to Shannon and Gilbert. If you say something crazy and the other guy leaves you unchecked, you're yeah, in there. You got to at least be like, really? Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. Gilbert Arena is our worst take of the week. Timberwolves, Nuggets, Magic Bucks, Magic Bucks, Pacers, Cavs, Pelicans, Kings, Pelicans, Warriors, Lakers, Pelicans, Suns, Kings, Lakers, Warriors. Watch some NBA basketball this week. Also, NBA, put some basketball on today. I don't care about the men's I final. Know. Come on. Who's who's dying to watch Zach Eady bang bodies with Donovan <laughs> Klingon all Not night? Me. All right. We'll catch you guys next Thursday. This Thursday. This, this upcoming Thursday. Thursday. Peace.